we're going to cover the next two sections together. And they deal with similar figures and then the perimeters and area relationship between similar figures. So the first thing we need to talk about um, are similarity transformations. Okay. Our similarity transformations can be any rigid tra transformation, which we covered earlier this chapter, which were translations, reflections, and rotations. Or our non-rigid, which are our dilations, which we had enlargements, and reductions. Or a series of one or more of those things put together. If I do any of those things combined together, I will get a similar figure. Okay? Similar figures have the same shape but can be different sizes. Okay. The same shape means that our corresponding Angles, those are the ones that match up from the start to the end, are congruent. It means they're the same size and same shape. The symbol for congruent is an equal sign with a little squiggly at the top. Let me uh, put a note out here. This means same size. which we call equal. This means same shape. Which we call similar. And if I stack one on top of the other, I get congruent. Um, so I'm going to talk, show you a little bit more about what they mean by corresponding angles and stuff like that. And there's another fact. So first thing, similar figures have the same shape, which means corresponding angles are congruent. The second fact is that corresponding sides are proportional. So let me go back here. This is fact one. Similar figures. Same shape corresponding angles are congruent. The fact two. Corresponding side lengths are proportional. What does that mean for me? I am going to draw two triangles. I'm going to label the first one as my initial one, A, B, C. I'll make this one A prime, B prime, C prime. We mark angles as congruent by putting um, the same number of round marks in there. So I can say Q 
here, angle A is congruent to angle A prime. B, I'm going to use two little round tickies in there to show that those two are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle B prime. I'm going to use three little pieces here. And I'm going to say that angle C, let me move it up a little bit for you, is congruent to angle B prime. That's the first fact. This is fact one. Fact two about corresponding side lengths being proportional. To go over a little bit of terminology stuff here. If I want to know this length right here, okay, I can either write it as the length of segment AB with the bar across the top to say it's a segment, or I could just write the AB without the bar. Let's scribble those out. So the, that piece right there is either the length of the lowercase l, AB with the segment, which is, or I could write it without the L and without the bar across the top. So the ratio for proportionality, proportions are ratios. We're going to do new over old. And if it's proportional, that, that means that the length of A prime, B prime over AB is equal to this distance, B prime, C prime, over BC, which is equal to our last one, which is A prime, C prime, over AC. That's what it means for it to be proportional. That means that relationship is going to be the same for every single one of them. We always put the new over the old because if I do that and I get the same number, that ratio is actually going to give us our scale factor from the last lesson. Okay. So if they're proportional, let's think about it, okay? Let's think about perimeter. Okay, I'm going to, just for arbitrary sakes, I'm going to put three numbers in for these lengths. So we're going to, I'm going to draw a little triangle, and I'm going to draw a bigger triangle. Okay, I'm going to call this side 3, 4, 5. This one is going to be 9, 12, 15. Let's look at perimeter here. Okay, and I'm actually going to make these right angles so that you can see that they're right triangles. Perimeter, in this case, is 3 plus 4 plus 5. That's 9 plus 3, which is 12. Perimeter on this one is 9 plus 12 plus 15, which is 27 plus 9 is 36. Now let's take my new, which is my one on the right, divided by the old. I get 36 over 12. Now let's look at the corresponding sides on these things. Well, what's 36 divided by 12? That's 3. So let's look here. Let's do 15 divided by 5. Guess what I get? I get 3. Let's do 9 divided by 3. Again, I get 3. So what I know about the perimeter of similar figures it's going to end up being the exact same ratio as I had here. So the perimeter of the corresponding side lengths is equal to my scale factor, which is equal to 
the perimeter of triangle ABC, uh, actually A prime, B prime, C prime, over the perimeter of the original triangle. So the perimeter, yeah, I use the same scale factor with the perimeter. Problem comes into play when we deal with area. Okay. So we're going to start out with easy figures. We're going to start out with a square, and then we're going to go to a rectangle. Okay. Square. And a bigger square. I'm going to call this each of these links two. I'm going to call each of these links four. Okay. Um, I only had to label one of them, but we can label all of them. We're going to call this one my old. We're going to call this one my new. Let's do this old area. So old area is equal to two times two, which is four. This area is four times four, which is 16. Well, let's look at this. 16 over 4 is 4. Huh. Take this. 4 divided by 2 is 2. They're not the same. Perimeter was the same scale factor. This one's not the same. Let's do another one. I'm going to do another square. I'm only going to label one side this time. I'm going to do three. I'm going to do nine. The area of the first one is three times three, which is nine. The area of the second one is nine times nine, which is 81. So let's do the areas first. New is 81 over old, which is nine. I get nine. My perimeter. is 9 over 3 is 3. Let's look at this relationship. Hey, when my perimeter changed by 2, my area changed by 4. When my perimeter changed by 3, my area changed by 9. I will tell you right now, if your perimeter changed by 4, your area is going to change by 16. Hopefully you guys caught on to this relationship. Whatever my perimeter changes by, my area is going to change by that number squared. Perimeter changed by 3. 3 squared is 9. My area changes by a factor of 9. My perimeter changes by 4. My area changes by 16. 4 squared is 16. So if I go back here to our original page that had these things on, I'm going to add that fact to the page here. So this K right here is the scale factor for my perimeter over my perimeter. Um, my area of triangle ABC over the area, actually put, I need to put primes because that's the new pieces, over the area of trying the original triangle ABC is equal to um, the scale factor squared, or it's equal to the length of A prime B prime over AB squared, which is equal to, and it can be every single one of these other combinations down here, squared is going to give me my areas. Okay, so let's... Go back and do a quick review before we go to the IXL. Similar figures are created by a combination of one or more of a rigid transformation or a dilation. Our rigid ones were translations, reflections, rotations. Our dilations were our enlargements and reductions. Similar figures have the same shape, but can only be different sizes. So that's the little red squiggly. Same shapes 
have corresponding angles that are congruent. So our similar figures have congruent angles. That means they measure the same. Corresponding side lengths are proportional. That means I'm going to get the same number. Five, 15 over 5 was the same thing as 9 over 3, which is the same thing as 12 over 4. That gives me my scale factor if I do new over old. And that's also the same scale between my two perimeters. The scale that I use between my two areas is that scale factor squared. And you're going to see that when we go over here to the IXL. And we are going to do two of them. We're going to do 2.6, which is similar figures. And we're going to do 2.7, which is area and perimeter of similar figures. And if we need a piece of paper, I will add the paper to the screen. Again, you can use a calculator if you need to on this stuff. Okay, are these shapes similar? The way you're going to tell whether they're similar is if corresponding pieces are proportional. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. So they're both rectangles, so I have a long piece and a short piece. So I am going to get to my piece of paper. So I want to check to see if long over long is equal to short over short. So my long, um, I'm going to go left over right. So I'm going to do is 39 over 36 equal to short over short, 25 over 25. I can tell you right now without using a calculator, the answer is no. Because these are both the same. These are different. Same, different. They're not similar. They're not proportional. So that's a no and a submit. Okay. Are these shapes similar? Okay. What we have to do for this group is we have to check every single one. Um, and let's look at it. They're saying that these two angles are the same. Yep, those two angles are the same. These two angles are the same. These two angles are the same. So I have matching pairs of congruent angles. So now let's check. My first recommendation is you draw the figures again, both in the same orientation. I'm going to draw them both like the first one. 28, 22, 28, 46. Okay, then I'm going to redraw the other one. 26, 26, the long piece is 40, the long piece is 23. I can tell you right now that they are not similar without doing any math. This is bigger than this. 46 is bigger than 40. But 22 is smaller than the 23. That's going to be physically impossible if they're the same shape. Okay, so they're not proportional. Okay, let's look at this one. Are they similar? The big piece is 850. So everything else would have to match exactly. So 850, 850, 400, 400, 750, 775. They don't match. Let's see if I can go to a higher level. I can't go to higher levels. Let's look at this one. 40 and 40. This one's a square. 40, 43. Nope, not similar. Okay, opposite sides are the same. Opposite sides are the same. Yep, we got that first check. Now let's do some ratios. Okay, I'm going to do the long piece over long piece. I'm going to do 45 over 27. I'm going to compare that to 40 over 24. And again, use a calculator if you need to. I know that 9 goes into both of these. 9 goes into 45 five times. 9 goes into 27 three times. I know that 8 goes into both of these. 40 divided by 8 is 5. 24 divided by 8 is 3. I have the same ratio, so they are similar. You can use a calculator if you need to to do that work.
37s all the same. 47s all the same. Opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Similar. Um, I have a rectangle. I have a rectangle. Now I need to do some work. I need to see if 35 over 28 is equal to, um, and I'm going to do 25 over 20. Again, you can use a calculator, but I know 7 goes into both of these. 7 goes into 35 five times. 7 goes into 28 four. 5 goes into 25 five times. 5 goes into 24. I have the same ratio. All four angles are right angles. They are similar. Okay. I can tell you right now, we look here. Two sides that touch each other are the same here. Two sides that touch each other are different here. Um, with the same angle relationship pairs, opposite angles being congruent, they cannot be similar. Okay, I'm going to go back to just the IXL. Notice that IXL, 71 points in five minutes. So I, I think that's enough of those. So now let's do the area perimeter one. Okay, area and perimeter of similar figures. says the figures below are similar. Label sides are corresponding, okay? So we know that the area is the area is proportional to the side length squared. So let's look at this relationship. Um, I'm going to bring up my paper. Okay. So what we see here is that I know that area two is equal to area one times six squared over seven squared. Okay. Or another way I could think about this is that area one is equal to area two times seven squared over six squared. Well, I know what my area two is, that's 36. So I know it's equal to 36, it's 49 over 36. If you need to use a calculator, you can go ahead and use it. It's gonna be 49 square meters. Area one has to be bigger than area two because that piece is bigger than this one. Perimeter. If this one's 8, this one's going to be 16 because perimeters are just proportional. You go from 1 to 2, you multiply by 2. So multiply 8 times 2 and you get 16. So those are level 1 problems. Let's do, I'm going to do another area. I'm going to use the same thing I did before. Area 1 is equal to area two. And I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna put um, length one over length two. That's a generic formula you can use. Um, squared, I gotta put a squared there. So the other way if you're solving for area two, area two is equal to area one times length 2 over length 1 squared. Or you can rearrange it in any form you need to. So area 1, I'm going to use the left-hand one. Area 1 is equal to 90 times length 1, which is 6 squared over 9 squared, which is 90 times 36 over 81. And I should get a smaller number than I started with. So I'm going to, I'm actually using a calculator. 90 times 36 divided by 81. And I get 40. Let's star these two formulas. 
Make sure you put those in your notes. Okay, I'm going to jump a level. I am at level two out of five. Oh, we have circles. All circles are similar. What is the ratio of the circumference of the smaller circle to the circumference of the larger circle? Smaller to larger. That would be smaller to larger. That's how we write ratios. That's the way they want us to write it. And the circumference is 2 pi r. This doesn't change, the 2 pi. Only thing that's changing is the radius. So I want to do small to big, 2 to 9. Okay, let's do another of those level twos. Uh, they're similar. What is the ratio of the area of the larger to the area of the smaller? Larger to smaller. Larger area would be two squared. Smaller area would be one squared. Two squared is four. One squared is one. So I'd end up with a four to one ratio. Okay, um, we're now at level three. It automatically boom, bumped us up there. What is the ratio of the area of the larger rectangle to the area of the smaller rectangle? Large to small. Area is squared. Eight squared to six squared um, is 64 to 36. I'm going to see if they'll take that. They may want it simplified. I don't know if they'll take it. They will take it, so they didn't require you to simplify that, which is nice to know for when you guys do it. Um, what is the area of the larger triangle? I gave you formulas. Here we go. Area 2 is area 1 times length 2 over length 1 squared. Area 2 is equal to area 1 times length 2 squared over length 1 squared. Um, 5 times, so this is equal to 25 times 64 over 25. They gave you a nice easy one to do work with. So that's a level 3 question. I think that's all the farther you need to be able to do is level 3s, but I'm going to show you a level 4 and a level 5. Says the figures are similar. The area is given. What is the ratio of side length of smaller to larger? Well, if the area is 25 to 64, I need to take the side length squared is these. So I need to take the square roots of each of those sides. I take the square root, which would be 5 to that would be 8. That ratio would be 5 to 8. So you only need to be working on these problems if you've got a score in the 80 or above. If you want to get that high. Um, same type of thing. Smaller rectangle. There's perimeter. Perimeter is given. What is the ratio of side length to smaller to larger? That would just be 14 to 35 because it's a direct relationship. And now we're at the level five questions. What is the ratio? If the ratio of the rectangle's perimeter is one to two, what is K? I just multiply. If that's a one, multiply it by two, I'd end up with four. So that should be enough to show you that you have the tools you need to do this work. Um, and that is it for 2.6 and 2.7. Make sure you're using paper or you're using one of the dry erase boards when you're doing this work.